Welcome to the science lesson, Where Things Are, for Monday, April 27th. You'll need workbook pages 125 through 127. ...to where they are. Leilani is visiting a wildlife sanctuary with her class. When the tour guide is talking about the animals, she points to where they are. She uses words like in front of, beside, below, above, on, and behind. This helps us find or locate the animal she's talking about. Do you think you can describe where the animals are in this scene? Have a look and tap the circles when you're ready. Is the alligator above the water or is it below the water? Is it behind the small white and blue bird? If you used any of these words to describe where the alligator is, you're correct. There are lots of ways to describe where something is. We can use other words to describe where the pond is. For example, it is in front of where I am looking. It is also beside the grass. There are lots of words we can use. If you were asked where the pink flamingos are, how would you describe their location? Would you say, in the pond? Or, under the large flying bird? In fact, both are correct. Welcome to the lesson, How Do We Describe Location? In this lesson, You'll learn how we can use simple words to tell someone where objects are. Can you describe where this surfer is? The vocabulary terms for this lesson are above, beside, below, behind, and in front of. Click each word to find out more about it. Brr! It sure looks cold. My mom took this picture and video when she was on a business trip. Can you use some of the new vocabulary words to describe where the peak of the mountain is? Is it above the valley? Is it in front of the camera? Words are great for describing where something is. Is your supper on the table or under the bed? It's important to choose the right word to describe just where things are. Click the labels on the different parts of this picture to learn which words can help you find different objects. The lamp is beside the bed. The ceiling is above the bed. The picture is behind the bed. The tray is on the bed. The floor is below the bed. A plant is in front of the bed. Isabella and her family enjoy beach vacations. They love playing in the sand and surf. She loves to go crabbing with her dad and also enjoys swimming and body surfing in the waves. Look at this family picture. Where is the family? Are they beside the sea? Are they in front of the camera? Think for a minute and then click the glowing circles to see some more. Where are the waves? Are they on the sea surface? Where is the beach? Is it in front of or behind the sea? Isabella and her dad go snorkeling when the sea is calm. As she swims and takes pictures of the fish, she needs to know where her dad is at all times. Is he in front? 
Is he behind? Sometimes, because they are in the sea, he can be above or below. When Isabella is below the surface of the water, the surface is above her. After Isabella and her dad go crabbing, they often explore tide pools, like this one, at low tide. When high tide comes back in, these animals are once again covered with ocean water. Are the animals above or below the water? These kids have grown a plant in a jar. Can you use your new words to describe if the jar is in front of the kids? Tap yes if you think the jar is in front of the kids, or no if you think it's behind the kids. That's right! The jar is in front of the kids. If it were behind them, we wouldn't be able to see it. You've learned a lot about how to describe an object's location. Before we leave this lesson, let's take a look at the main points we've covered. Objects can be above something else. The pictures in this photo are above the bed. Objects can also be below something. In this photo, the covers are below the pillows. Objects can be beside something else. Here, the lamp is beside the bed. And objects can also be behind something. In this picture, the wall is behind the lamp. Now that you've finished this lesson, if you wish, you can go back and review any part of the lesson again. Hi, and welcome to the lesson Where Things Are. In this unit, we're going to talk about positional words. If you remember a couple weeks ago in math, we, we talked about positional words, and those are words that are used to describe where things are located. We use different words like above, to describe where things are when we're talking about over or up. We use below to describe things that are under or down. We use words like behind to describe in back of. We use words like in front of to describe, well, when things are in front of us. We use words like beside to describe when things are next to us whether they're on the left side or the right side of us. If you look at the pictures on um, your science book and you take a look right here at that picture, we would use the word to describe those two animals. We would say that those two, the, the rabbit is next to or beside. The rabbit is beside the dinosaur. The dinosaur is beside the rabbit. All right, move over to the next box up here on the top, and let's describe the position of these two. Above and below. The dinosaur is above the rabbit. The rabbit is below the dinosaur. Down here in this box, we have in front of and behind. We have the dinosaur and the rabbit here. And the dinosaur is in front of the rabbit. And the rabbit is behind the dinosaur. All right, we're going to use our positional words a little bit more. So get ready to practice them and let's turn to the next page. All right, boys and girls, here we are on page 126 and 127. I know that you should probably only be looking at 126. Mine's a little bit different. So um, I'm going to break it down for you. 
Um, right here on page 126, uh, we have a couple of different um, positional words, okay? And it says there, you can use words to tell where things are, all right? And just like we've been talking about, we can use all different kinds of words. Now, sometimes mom or dad or your brothers or sisters, grandmas, grandpas, they can tell you, can you go get that uh, box that I left over there on the on the counter? Which one? Oh, it's it's underneath the it's underneath my purse. You see, they use positional words. OK, it's good to know or understand these words because then you can find things that they're asking you or you can also describe things that you want them to find. So let's take a look over here on our train track and let's see over here we have the word left okay because this one this little animal over here is on the left of our train track this animal over here is on the right of our train track so again if we were describing which animal say oh did you see that animal oh i did but which one are you talking about i'm talking about the one on the left of the train track Oh, I saw the one on the right of the train track. And that's how we could describe which one we were talking about. All right, now let's move over here to above and below. All right, here we have two trucks and they're both at the bridge. But this one is above the bridge because he's going over the bridge. You see that? So because he's going over the bridge, we would say he is above the bridge. All right, this one is driving under the bridge. So because he is going under the bridge, we would say he is below the bridge. All right, now over here, we have just the word beside, because when we use the word beside, to describe something we don't really we don't need another word because it's not over and under or above and below when you say beside it doesn't really matter unless we're using like over here where we need to say on the left or on the right over here we can just say it's beside here we're talking about two of the similar of uh, two of the same items so that's why we're saying the one on the left and the one on the right over here, if we were talking about two trees, we could talk about the one on the left or the one on the right. <clears throat> but because they're two different objects, we could say they're beside each other. All right, over here on this page, 126, what I would like for you to do is please circle the truck that is below the bridge. Circle the truck that is below the bridge. And then I also want you to mark an X on the truck that is above the bridge. Mark an X on the truck that is above the bridge. All right, when you're done with that, we're gonna come over here and move to page 127. And we're gonna go over a few more positional words look at our little ducks over here they're walking in a row and just like when we walk in a row and I, what do i tell you you're supposed to be in front of that person or you're supposed to be behind that person oh i miss telling you guys that get in front of so and so you're supposed to be behind so and so when we walk in a line i do miss you guys just so you know that all right, so anyways, in front of and behind. The person in front of is always the person that is first. The person behind is always last. Not necessarily last in the line, but they're always in the back, I should say, okay? All right, now let's see, what do we have here? Horses in a little stall, and we have in, one that is in the stall, 
and out. One that is out of the stall. All right. Just like we are right now in our houses. And soon enough, just be patient and we will be out of our houses. I know we will. Just be patient. All right. So over here in this draw section in this box, what I would like you to do is draw for me a ball. And you are going to draw a ball that it is in front of a tree. So the tree is behind the ball. The ball is in front of a tree. One more time in this box, please draw a ball that is in front of a tree. All right, happy drawing. And I will talk to you in just a few minutes for our next lesson. Bye, guys.